Hello, Orvillians, one and all. Welcome to Talking the Orville, a very special edition of Talking the Orville because watch parties are back. Hopefully, if the YouTube Avises up there allow us uh, to do it, I have a, a setup that I've come up with and I figured out how to use the StreamYards that we should hopefully be able to all press play at the same time of our uh, wherever we have the Orville, whether it's Hulu, Disney Plus, um, I, I have it on Amazon as well as the other services as well. Uh, on the screen, you'll see me. You will see the subtitles of the episode so that you can follow along, even if you're not watching it. But even if you are watching it from home, you can see where we're at by the subtitles that I'll have on screen. And we'll be talking about the episode the entire time. And uh, I'll be throwing out some facts about the episode while we watch it. Yeah, I have some facts here. Thanks to the Orville Fan Wiki. I highly recommend you check that out. It's very in-depth. Uh, it's been around since almost day one of the Orville. I've been checking it out for years now. It's a, it's a, it's a great resource uh, for fans of the Orville. Uh, the Orville Wiki. Fan Wiki. What's going on, you guys? Uh, Raven says, just placed my pre-order for the Deluxe Guide. Yes, the Orville, uh, the guide to the Orville written by Andre Barmanis is coming out at the end of sep September. Hmm, what a great promotion for a new season of the Orville, which we're still insiders know. Insiders know that the Orville is going to be back for a fourth season, but they have not yet announced it to the public. But since you guys are here with me, you are now insiders uh, to the Orville production. So uh, that's another benefit from talking the Orville. And if anyone is wondering, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the ticker for the Avis auction. You see Avis right there? That is a screen-used page from the episode Krill, episode six from season one. That is the actual page that you see in the episode. It was bestowed upon me by production about three or four years ago. It's my prized possession, but... We have gotten to a point with talking the Orville that uh, if I want to keep promoting the Orville, and I got a lot of plans all summer long to keep promoting the Orville and keep raising awareness of the show, and it's been working. I've been getting millions of views every month on all my Orville uh, uh, shorts promotions, uh, but it's got to the time where I'm like, if I want to keep promoting the Orville, I have to keep the lights on uh, being demonetized by YouTube. Stupid YouTube sucks. So it's time to let go of my official screen used page. The backside of it has krill language all over it. It's, it's really great. Uh, in order to keep the talk in the Orville going and to promote the show and to build the fandom. It sucks, but these things got to happen. And I'm pretty sure this is, they made a couple of these. And this, I think, is probably the last one out there. Uh, so if anyone's interested in that, you can send your bid uh, to the uh, email address down below. But what we're going to do here, let me set up. I'm so glad you got the pre-order for the, the Deluxe Guide, Raven. I'm in talks with Dark Horse right now in the hopes of getting a uh, an early, uh, an early uh, edition of the book in just a couple days here so I can read through it and be prepared to promote the heck out of the thing in September when it comes out. And hopefully, alongside with that, uh, with that book, that deluxe edition or any edition, the standard edition is also available now, um, but doesn't come with all the cool stuff like the deluxe edition does. Wouldn't September, with the release of this book, be a great time to also announce fourth season of the show? Wouldn't that like work hand in hand to uh, <laughs> to 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 help the book and to help the Orville? Hmm, that's what I'm thinking. But we'll talk about that more. Next week on June 8th with another um, an episode of The Union where I bring in uh, a, a, a bunch of the Orville fandom leaders out there, the Admiralty of the Orville uh, fandom. We're going to get together next week again, and we're going to be talking about season four. We're going to be talking about uh, when they might announce season four. We're going to be talking about stuff that we want to happen in season four as well as Hopefully, I'll have a lot more information on the guide, and I can, you know, give you little sneak peeks of, of what's up with the guide to the Orville. 
Uh, let me set some stuff up here, get us ready for this live show, and I'll explain it while I'm doing it. So I set this up. Right beneath me, I have the episode that will play, uh, just a sliver of the episode, but that sliver will give us the subtitles of the episode. And all you got to do is press play at the same time I press play, and we'll do a countdown together and things like that. Uh, Brian Dawkins says, it's not a good day when you find Derulio in your bed. Not just once, but twice, right? <laughs> Ed's had to deal with that twice. Actually, Ed had to deal with that three times, really, if you think about it, when it comes to uh, Ed and Derulio and beds. Uh, Raven says, I am too. I haven't been able to grab any Orville merch thus far, so I'm very excited for that. I really hope they send you an advanced copy. Oh, there you go, preferably signed. Um, I'm hopefully might have an advanced copy in a couple days. Fingers crossed. I don't want to get ahead of myself, uh, but I don't know if it'll, it might just be a digital copy, but that's good enough for me in the meantime, just so I can read it and understand the Orville even more and tell you guys how awesome the, the thing is. So are you guys ready to watch the Orville episode one, season one? This is the pilot episode, Old Wounds. This is what brought the Orville universe to all of us back in 2017. Uh, and, and, of course, we'll be talking about that while the episode is playing. I, I'll be having the audio on for my speakers. It won't be on for, for for the screen, you know, for you guys. Maybe some of it will be picked up on my, on my microphone, but I tested this out and it didn't seem to pick up. So hopefully that'll be good. And this is a little bit of a test. Uh, for these watch parties to hopefully have YouTube not uh, come down with a rain of fire. I don't know why they would. The screen is covered. It's just the subtitles. There's no audio, and we're talking over the whole thing. So it should be fine, I would think. And hopefully it'll, it'll promote the show. But YouTube don't care about that, you guys. <laughs> All right, Barry is ready. Who else out there is ready? You can let me know in the comments. And if, if you guys are ready, I will start the countdown. I think it should all work. Oh, no, I need this other screen put up there. Boom. Okay, I got that screen. You can see I got the episode. We're starting at the count of uh, the timestamp of zero when it comes to the episode. It'll be in HD, though you won't really be able to see it. Raven is ready. Alyssa Courtright is ready. And we already know Barry is ready. Uh, Usta Shrike is ready to watch this thing. Brian Dawkins is ready. All right, that's enough people. I think we could start this countdown. All right, so I'm going to count uh, down from three. Are you ready? You got your fingers on the play button. In three, two, one, play. You see, you, you can see it here. You shouldn't be able to hear it, so that's good. If you can hear it, just let me know. I'll make an adjustment. I'm just trying not to wear headphones right now, you guys. New York. New York City in the future. 400 years in the future. The 25th century. A lot of people don't realize this is the year right now. 2418. Ed's just coming home from work. Doing, doing union stuff. I don't know what he does at this point. <laughs> Roman says, JP is always the guy who got into the club because you know the DJ. I do know the G DJ, actually. Oh, and here's uh, Kelly laughing. He, T. And here we go. Our first introduction. And you can see, well, if you're watching it, you can see that is Rob Lowe. Never knew it until the episode of Cupid's Dagger. When Rob Lowe played Derulio, he was actually there in episode one. Yeah, you can only see a small sliver, which is the only thing that'll be allowed for a watch, a watch party of a of an IP like this. YouTube won't allow any more than this, but we can see the subtitles. One year later, now we are in the year twenty four. 19. Our first look at uh, Victor Garber as Admiral Halsey.
Now you'll see Ed's shoulders have uh, three lines on his shoulder pads because he's not a captain. Later on, he'll have four lines. Let me see here. I have my list of facts. So filming on this episode began on January 13th, 2017 at 6.30 a.m. And the director of this episode was John Favreau. You know John Favreau. He did Iron Man, a bunch of other stuff, uh, The Mandalorian. Uh, Seth MacFarlane called uh, John Favreau his conscience. Uh, John Favreau encouraged uh, Seth to tone down the script's comedy and remove jokes that disrupted dramatic or suspenseful scenes. He said, you have to trust what you have here. Uh, I'm into it. I read the script, and I didn't put it down. The story works, and you don't need to crunch, crunch a bunch of, and you don't need to crunch in all of these jokes. McFarland later said Favreau's comments became a pivotal moment when he realized the Orville could primarily be a dramatic show. And I think that's really cool, you guys, because the drama on the Orville is really great. Uh, and then they throw some jokes in as well. Yeah, Raven says, I'm so glad Seth listened to Favreau. The show didn't need to be a to be slapstick at all. And I love the, the, the tone that they landed on season three. It's funny, but it's serious as well. And it has really, really high sci-fi uh, uh, ideals going on. In, 24, in 2419, we go to space. Well, I do know at least 200 years before this, uh, the Union or the Earth had space travel. I don't know if they were called the, I think they might have been called the Union at that point. I don't know exactly how long ago when they first got into true space travel, but 200 years ago, they had ships and they were traveling around and uh, meeting other races uh, around the galaxy. Thanks, Dan Crane. And also, let me, I got so many buttons to push, you guys. There's lots of buttons. And if anybody wants to tip the show, uh, you can do so by clicking the link in the chat. Really helps keep the lights on, helps me keep promoting the Orville. My goal is to get the fandom so huge that by the time season four hits, the, there's so many people watching it, they have no option but to renew it right then and there. I'm tired of waiting for renewal notifications. <laughs> we need season four, five, six, seven, eight, all of it. Ah, uh, Justin the Ogre. We only saw him once. Wouldn't we love to see him again? We technically could see him again. He's a he's a uh, an eSIM character, so you could just reload that program. Boom! There's Justin the Ogre. Feel so blessed. Orville's coming back. We just don't know exactly when. So here we're learning a little bit more about uh, Gordon's personality besides uh, the eSIM. Yo, what's up, Daniel Barry? Nine fifty. It's the morning in space. Yes, the space space has morning, noon, evening, night, midnight, all that stuff because they're all humans that all have their watches set. I don't know what that means for different time zones, but space has its own time zones created for it by humans, just like humans created time in the first place as far as the time that's kept on a watch. And there's our first look at the Orville. Isn't she beautiful? Not bad at all. And the Orville looks, I mean, in season three, it looks the same, but it's so much more detailed. Everything is more detailed. In season three, uh, uh, Brandon Fyatt wanted to update the Orville to give more panels and make it more complicated looking, things like that. 
And they did that. Seth said, yes, let's do that. And then all the other ships in their editing program looked looked crappy compared to the Orville. So they had to update everything uh, production-wide to match how awesome Orville now looks. In season four, they could do an episode where Ed has to come to terms with Kelly's affair when the crew gets stuck in a time loop. I love it when the show does anything time related. Time travel, anything is tough because there's always some sort of way of thinking that makes it not work. But the Orville tries to tackle it. They come up with a way of thinking, uh, a way of doing it, and they, they come up with some great stories from it. Brian Dawkins says season four in 2026, maybe, maybe 2025. I could see it being in 2025, but I think if they get it ready by 2025, it'll be the very end of 2025, just like they did with season two. Season two premiered at the end of December uh, 2018, and then the rest of it played in 2019. That's how you get around that. They've done it before. They might do it again. There you go. Barry says, no, late 2025. I could see it happening. I know they're itching to get back into space, and crew members are starting to post stuff on, on online, well, on Twitter at least, because that's what I follow is Twitter, about going back to space, but now they can't wait to, to get back there. Little nuggets like that. Um, John Kassar, the director, executive producer, just said he can't wait to get back to space. But they are not allowed, from what I can tell, they're not allowed to literally say that it is renewed, really. Seth said that uh, there's going to be more, but that's all he said to the public, that is. Yeah, you have to renew your uh, subscription to Hulu then. Absolutely. You don't have to do it right now unless you want to watch the Orville all the time like I do. I have Hulu right now because I got a great uh, Black Friday deal uh, last year. 99 cents a month for one whole year. It's a pretty good deal. Now, if you can see Isaac, his head is much smaller in this pilot episode. Later on, I think in the very next episode, they come back and his mask is a little bit larger, shaped ever so slightly different. And probably a lot more comfortable for Mark to wear. So if this watch party works, my goal is to watch all 36 episodes that we currently have of the Oroville as we count down to season four. A fun idea would be Gordon and Isaac switch bodies. At first they think they got what they want, but realize it's not for the best. Yeah, Gordon probably wouldn't be able to be so relaxed, if you know what I mean, if he had to switch bodies with Isaac. Cisco's girlfriend is better in the Orville, in my honest opinion. Yeah, Penny Johnson Gerald, she's great in the Orville. She's great in her life. She's she's a really, really cool person. You know, we love her uh, in Deep Space Nine, but Dr. Finn is, is what it's all about. So this scene, we see that uh, Gordon has basically been on, de on desk duty because, you know, he's a bad boy, a mature boy. Mm, an empath. Sherbert sure, says, I hope we get an empath in season four. Let's see if we have, have had any characters like that. I don't recall any characters like that from any planets or episodes or anything. I knew, my, I mean, I do remember Marina Sirtis being in an episode. Uh, she's an empath in Star Trek, but she's not an empath on the Orville. <laughs> Brian says, I saw Adrian Palenki in the movie Coffee Town. Two, 2013 the other day. She was okay. 
Yeah, Adrian's been in a lot of stuff, but my favorite thing is her playing Kelly. I think she's just perfect at playing Kelly. Now, if, if you look at what's been going on the last few weeks and upcoming, uh, Adrian Palicki has been doing a lot of uh, promotion for the Orville. It really seems like she's going to be coming back for a fourth season. I mean, when she alluded that she might not be coming back, you know, she had some legitimate legitimate complaints. You know, she wants to an actor. She wants to work, and there's just not – in production right now she wants to get back to work uh but she's really you know just the other day she was doing an interview where she says fingers crossed we get a season four so it looks like she's gonna be back so if anyone's worried about that i wouldn't worry i mean i was never worried but that's a little bit for everyone else yeah a few more years to refine her talent and she really did i think her as kelly is i think she's so good she's my favorite character Samwise, I've met almost half the cast. They're a nice lot, even if they're loud lot. Even if they're a loud lot. Uh, they are loud. Uh, I would say Peter Macon is the loudest. Who would you say is the loudest? Peter Macon is a, is a bunch of fun. Had fun interviewing him uh, a couple times. I've had fun hanging out with him over at the Orville premiere. He is a lot of laughs. Ah, here's a good question. Okay, in this episode with Alara Katan, you'll see she has no eyebrows. She has a more alien-looking head. She has a five head, basically. Um, I think that was their original idea, and as they were working it out and coming back for more to make more episodes, I think they realized, oh, she'll be able to emote more if we figured out a way to you know, reduce her makeup uh, because in the very next episode, which was originally supposed to be the fourth episode, but they moved it to the second episode because it was so good and they wanted to keep the audience excited. Um, she was the star of the episode, command performance. She had a lot of scenes and it really helped uh, her act, emote, I should say, uh, with uh, a more refined looking uh, alien look. So they got rid of that big old clunky forehead. Yeah, she looks better with eyebrows. You're able to relate to her more. Oh, yeah, I need to reread the books. Uh, Brian says, in the comic book, Ed was working at the Starbase and commuting. That I kind of remember that. Also, in one, in one of the uh, comic books, they go back years to when Ed first met Gordon on... on uh, a ship he was stationed on. I can't remember exactly which uh, comic book that was, which episode. What's up, PJ? PJ from Orville Nation is here, you guys. PJ, of course, is a, a, a long-standing member of those who love the Orville and uh, try to spread the word because... PJ knows we all do better when we all do better. Thanks, PJ. I'm glad you're able. To, glad you're able to, to be here. We're watching. Uh, we're doing the uh, the first live watch party in a very long time. Hopefully, YouTube is cool with it. Because if YouTube's not cool with it, we have to figure something else out, you guys. And it's very hard to tell what YouTube is cool with. I'm about three and a half weeks away from being allowed to reapply for monetization so that then YouTube can I you know, can get some YouTube funds to help me keep promoting the Oroville. Uh, but that's three and a half weeks away. But I'm going to have to make a lot of changes to the channel, clean it up here and there so that the dumb YouTube algorithm uh, says, okay, thumbs up, you can be monetized again. I'll be removing all of the Orville shorts, which have been doing such a great job of promoting the show. Tens and tens and tens of millions of views, between 20 and 45 million views a month. And uh, so many people discovering the show because, because of it, but I have to remove them all and I'm gonna be placing them on a whole separate channel uh, and it'll be permanent. I'm not going back and forth. 
I realized YouTube is a little bitch, like Gordon just said. And um, they're all going on to their own uh, Talking to Orville Shorts channel so that, you know, they can help promote their show. Just, be, just because I can't use them on a monetized channel doesn't mean I don't want to keep promoting the show. That is the most important thing to me. So um, I'll be putting them on their own Talking to Orville Shorts and then linking it to this channel so they could still be found from this channel. Goby Thoth, wait, sorry. Goby Thoth, Aussie in the house. Good day. Good day to you. So good to see you. And then what we got here, Barry, since I have two screens on my computer, I have the Orville play on the other screen. All right, that's what I got going on. I have the stream right here or right here. And then over here, I have uh, some analytics from the stream as well as the actual episode. Ooh, I'm thinking of making the scene into a short. I just watched the scene the other day and I was like, oh, that'd be a good short. Of course, it'll be on the secondary channel uh, at the end of next month. Because, you know, I want to be able to keep the lights on of course, by making content, but I also want to promote the Orville the best possible way I can. Shorts is the best possible way. It's been working. I have proof over and over again about it, but I can't monetize. So I'm going to put them on their own separate channel. I might, Samwise, that's, I've thought about that. When I get time, right now, I, I because I'm working so hard to try to keep the lights on, uh, Uber is just not it's not working, you guys. It's not enough. Um, that's why I have to sell, or not sell, but auction off this guy. I'll put that back up on the screen. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking once I get all the comedic stuff, there's still a lot more to do, then I'm going to start going into the dramatic stuff. It's just the comedic stuff, audiences love it. It just keeps them engaged. But yes, I do plan on doing that. And all kinds of whatever other I keep having ideas all the time. It's just I don't have time to do everything. Look <laughs> at the crew listening to them fight. Oh, mommy and daddy are fighting. Actually, no, I figured this out. Uh uh DCKP20. Um are you still on the fence about bringing back YouTube memberships? I figured it out because, yes, I was kind of on the fence. And I'm like, well, YouTube just is taking people's money. So I'm like, what's the lowest I can put it where it's still fair to me and not giving YouTube so much money? So I figured it out. I'll be bringing back memberships when I get remonetized. Uh, it'll be at a little bit of a lower price than before. Uh, but it should be fair uh, for everyone. Not as fair for YouTube, but F YouTube. So I had to do some calculations to figure it out. So I figured it out. So I'll be bringing them back because they're fun because I can make cool badges and, and different levels and, and have membership only posts, things like that. So they will be coming back. But I'm not even going to worry about it until I get remonetized. Never time enough. Uh, it's been like 72 hours a week trying to keep the lights on and I'm not able to promote the Orville the way I wanted. The, the way I had to go uh, uh, back to promoting the Orville is I have to get up like in the middle of the night, work for a couple hours, and then go back to bed. So that's what I've been doing. But also I'm in um, the process of trying to get a job. I don't want to say where it's at, but uh, uh, there's a job. I have some people helping me out to try to get me a, a legit job and what i'm going to do is i'm going to work that job which will be just regular human hours and probably weekends off so that way i'll have my main job and then talking the orbital will be job number full-time job number two and then maybe uber as a side gig every once in a while whenever i need it but it should be getting me uh i mean but that might be months away before that even happens but i gotta survive now we don't need no stinking badges. Well, you're going to get badges if you're a member. Gosh darn it. Oh, and then also, for anyone who missed it, what 
it's going, I have so many things to click. No, not that one. The Avis auction. I am auctioning off that screen use page from the episode of the Orville, the Krill, or just called Krill, actually. Uh, that was used in the episode. Uh, auctioning it off. If you want to um, place your bid uh, into the works, you can do so at ego by emailing egotasticft at gmail.com. And uh, I hate to auction it off, but it's all for the greater good because I need to keep promoting the Orville, you guys. I can't take uh, any time off <laughs> from doing it because it's working. It's working for the Orville. It's not necessarily working for me, but it's working for the Orville, and that's what I care about. Yeah, you guys see that dog in the background looking at the balls? And this is the page that I'm auctioning off. Actually, screen used. I've already had uh, a bid of uh, over $700. But it's worth way more than that. So I'm kind of holding off to see whoever, the, whoever has the best bid will be the winner. And then I'll ship it to you and maybe put some other sh stuff in, in, the, in the package with it. But I'll be shipping it off in a uh, you know package tube that you put posters in. Uh, it does not come with the frame. That frame was a gift, so I have to keep it. Well, the page was a gift too, but the frame was a a, a different gift from, from somebody else. The Wrath of Avis. So this is back the first bunch of episodes, probably until. Probably the first nine episodes, Ed was always giving little jabs at Kelly. I almost felt bad for her, but then I remember, oh, yeah, she kind of deserved it. But then after episode nine, I'm like, hmm, does she deserve it? Thank you, PJ. I'm doing my best. When I first started years ago, I was just trying to have a YouTube channel. And then the last couple years... I'm like, you know what? No, I care about, I don't care about having a YouTube channel. I care about uh, promoting the Orville to get the fandom to grow as large as possible. And I care about you guys to keep us together and keep us uh, uh, talking about this universe and enjoying this universe and getting more new adventures in this universe. <laughs> I like badges. I respect people who have badges. They must have done something. They did. So uh, on the right, you see uh, one of Dan's people working there. So that race was already created. I mean, we didn't have Lieutenant Dan yet, but we definitely got that the alien. Oh, uh, thanks, Ann Bell. It'd be great to see you on the Orville. You are a great asset to them. I'm trying to be. My goal in life, and I don't know how to make this happen, my goal in life is to work for the Orville. Or anything Fuzzy Door Productions. But I'm pretty solid on Orville stuff. I think I could do a great job for the Orville. But if I could work for the Orville and it actually keeps the lights on, that would be great. The thing I would love to do for the Orville is promote, promote, promote online. Because I do it already. I love doing it. And I'm passionate about it. I've never been passionate about something for this long. Oh, there's a banana. I bought a banana the other day from a convenience store. I was like, I got a dollar in my pocket. What can you buy with a dollar? I'm like, oh, here's a banana. I'll buy a banana. What about salads? Yeah, it would work on salads. A lot of people don't realize that. The anti-banana ray will work on salads. And it will work on that lady's face, too. I actually feel really bad for her. She didn't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. There's another jab at Kelly. The ban banana is afraid of me. Oh, watch out what I like to have on the Orville ship. 
as if I was actually on the Orville in the 25th century? That's a good question. What would I be qualified for? Oh, I don't want to do any of the sciencey stuff. And I don't want to sweep. They must have Roombas, right? Super space Roombas. I'd probably work at Muska's. I'd start a rival restaurant where we just make really good peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That's a good question, Raven. Raven says, I always wondered how they informed that woman's family of her death. This is all super top secret, super duper, uber top secret. So what would they say? They can't tell her, tell the family exactly what happened. That's just be some, oh, there was an accident. Bartender, yeah. I'd actually, well, that's even t even tough. Well, bartender would probably be super easy because you use the, the, the resynthesizer. And basically being a bartender would just be handing people things. No, Lynn, there's not new episodes yet, but it is on the books to make a fourth season of the Orville, but it hasn't started yet. We're waiting for Seth to finish his other uh, productions he's got going out going on right now. And then once uh, he gets enough of those going, then his contract will allow him to move over and work on the Orville. Damn you, Derek. Look at Derek. What an idiot. He's my least favorite. Hey, your daughter tripped and fell into a machine that aged her by 100 years. Our bad. Ba -da -da -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> yeah, Lynn, I am very excited to. Well, you guys know I'm excited. I'm excited about old episodes of the Orville, let alone new episodes of the Orville. I just love the Orville. Dr. Lee's math made the device work. Now, the Quill originally, originally in the script, the Quill did not have a sensitivity to light. The sun would not hurt them. It came up with that after the fact. I think after they filmed the episode and everything uh, and edited it. Uh, then they came up with the idea and they're like, oh, that'll work for so many other things. So they went back before the episode aired, of course, and re-edited it and added masks over the, the Krill's faces when we first meet them right here. Oh, thanks, Deck. Seth would be lucky to have you on any of his projects. I can see you having a buddy cop dynamic with one of his characters i would love to do anything for seth i i owe seth big he changed my life and uh and i would love to support i've always loved his his, his work his humor family guy i fell over with it day one 25 years ago and uh i've known about seth McFarlane for 25 years because of family like literally knew about he him this guy being the creator and i've loved everything he's done since so i would love to keep up that passion that i that i have for his projects and do something for him i mean i'm doing something <laughs> i'm doing talking the orville but uh, you know some some sort of job something that keeps the lights on pays the bills i'm the job that i love Very good point, Alyssa. Alyssa, I love how Ed and Kelly still default to teamwork mode without even thinking, right? They got over all the BS uh, because of this thing that's happening. And they're uh, they're like, okay, boom, teamwork. We, we are the, the, the two leaders. We need to do what we can and, and be over all, all the BS that we've had in our past. And once this is over, we can get back to the BS. And, Bell, you are doing what you are supposed to be doing. This is great. This is great. This is what we're all supposed to be doing. Uh, and says, I finally got my best friend to watch. So I just finished our fourth time watching them all. Watching them all and she is almost finished.
but hooked now. That's so good. All people have to do is to watch it and not have an internet mind where everyone wants to bitch about everything, no matter what, as if they're making anything. Just watch it, understand, you know, try to realize what it is and what it's trying to provide to you, the viewer. And there's no way you're not going to fall in love with it. We all did it. And there's a lot more than just us. I can tell you that. I've been following the fandom for seven, seven years now. Every day. Every day I follow it. I see what people are saying. I see how many more people are talking about the Orville every single day. That's right, Deck. Me too. His work helped define uh, my sense of humor. I feel maybe me too. You know, in uh, in in my videos, when I do proper talking the Orville videos, I always do cutback humor, or um, or cutaway humor, I should say, where I say something and I show a little clip, you know, uh, to support that joke. I got that from Seth MacFarlane with Family Guy. All right, Lynn. Got most of my friends to watch it and the newer Star Treks and Game of Thrones. What? That's three things. That's a triple threat. That's uh that's uh uh Mocklins, Space Orcs, and Dragons. That'd be a fun game to play. Space Orcs and Dragons. Don't forget to check out every month. Uh, the Orville RPG that we play right here. I'm talking the Orville. We're playing the RPG version of the Orville. It's a Dungeons and Style a style game set in the Orville universe. Um, we have a game master. We got players. We got all that stuff. And we're going to be eventually having red shirts where we have special guest stars that come in and just play a single character uh, for the episode who's probably going to die at some point. <laughs> We'll get rid of them at some point. So eventually we'll have not only special guests, but you know, some random raffles so you guys can join in on, on this, this particular episode. Hug the donkey. This is Kelly giving some of her inside information about Ed and being correct. He's just hoping to give him drugs. And he was. Yeah, Raven, check this out. The next one, I don't have the next one scheduled yet, but I believe it's going to be the very last Saturday of this month. We do once a month because I got so many different live shows that I'm doing from now on. Let me look at this calendar here. June, June, June. We're almost into June. The next one should be, don't quote me on this, but it should be June 29th. I just have to confirm the day with the other players, and then I'll schedule it, and you'll see it. And i got so many live shows coming up. Uh, besides the Union show next week, and uh, we are the Orville. I'm also doing the Orville Spotlight, where I have special guests from the show, from production, uh, sometimes fans, people are just big fans, but we're going to be talking uh, on June 22nd, my birthday, to Renee Posada, who was a guest star on the episode Twice in a Lifetime. She played the uh, uh, realtor agent uh, trying to sell a house to uh, to Isaac and Charlie. We're going to be talking to her about her experience working on the show and just her love of the show. She's a big fan as well. I'm cooking things up. I'm also working on, in, in September, when the Guide to the Orville comes out, uh, working on doing an interview with the guy who drew the schematic that comes with the guide. The schematic of the whole ship. The big old fold-out with the deluxe edition. You get the big fold-out of the schematic of the ship that he drew. And uh, we'll be talking to him about the book. And, of course, we'll be talking to uh, actors from the show, the main cast, all that stuff as we ramp up towards season four. A lot of stuff I got planned. I just got to find time to to stop driving around with uh, a waste of time Uber so I can sit here and, and 
schedule all the stuff and do live shows and make videos. Someday, someday, hire me, Seth. Love the music on the Orville, especially the guitar playing. Love the wedding episode. Oh yeah, the wedding episode, music from uh, Scott Grimes. Now the music for this episode of the Orville, I think is Bruce Blotton, let me see. Let me see, I got pages of info. Yeah, the composer for this episode is Bruce Rotten, who, of course, has done music for a lot of the Orville. This scene is so funny because, yes, this is so logical. We've been watching sci fi for all these years. People come up on the screen. It would make sense that at some point someone's going to come up on a view screen and not be uh, centered correctly and you have to say hey can you get into the center it's distracting me when ed asked the krill captain to move to the center of the monitor that is an intentional nod to classic science fiction shows where the subject always stands in the center frame of a screen it was also one of the first jokes thought of by Seth Farn. So that joke right there where he asked the krill to move, that's one of the first jokes Seth came up with for this show. I should record an official commentary for, for episodes of the Orville. I got enough information to keep the facts going while an episode plays. What do you guys think? Of course, I don't have time. <laughs> Someday, I hope to have time. I'm just trying to find time to uh, write the Orville uh, fan script that I'm writing. Brian wants to know how Nicola is. Nicola is my cat. She's doing great. She's back in the house. She hardly leaves the house anymore. And she's, when we're trying to sleep, she's crawling all over us again. So that's all a good sign. She's happy to be in the house. She's a happy cat. She even plays with the dogs. The dogs play a little bit too rough with her lately, but she still plays. She doesn't run away too often. Sometimes she does, and she should. Because sometimes she ain't in the mood. She's a cat. If they're not in the mood to be pet or played with, they're not in the mood. Leave them be. How are they going to know? They're going to know. How are they going to know? So we see uh, just a brilliant little plan, a brilliant little sci-fi plan. They're uh gluing a pine wood i think it's a pine a pine wood tree seed to the edge of the uh, anti-banana ray the arnob device so that when it gets activated it puts that tree forward in time by a hundred years so the tree that little seed instantly becomes a giant tree brilliant people don't give them enough credit for how brilliant that is Yep, Thomas, this is the episode that helped start it all. Even when I first watched this episode back in 2017, I was like, huh, I kind of like that. I, want, I wouldn't mind watching more. Uh, but when we get to episode two, just the second episode, Command Performance, the middle of that episode, I'm like, I love this show. This show is for me. This is what I've been waiting for. And, of course, the next watch party will be that episode, Command Performance. Look, there goes that tree. Okay, now listen to the joke here. A lot of people don't understand this joke. I get the joke. You guys probably get the joke, but a lot of people don't get the joke. What's Arbor Day? It's a holiday where you plant the trees. Oh, I didn't get that. She had to think a second. <laughs> Nobody knows what Arbor Day is. Some people do. Okay, she said, you got wood. Everyone laughs. Ed says that is better, isn't it? It's not. The better joke is the Arbor Day joke. But this is the sensibility of people 400 years from now. And they think I got wood is funny. And of course, that's very juvenile, immature joke. Uh, his joke is better. A lot of people are like, well, his joke's better. Why is that funny? That's the joke. The joke is that his joke is better. But everyone thinks the dumb joke is the better joke. Because we're 400 years from the future. People have different sensibilities. And Bell, if he hires you, then you will forget about us. And I'll be doing it for you guys. 
but if he does hire you, uh, we will be happy for you. You deserve it. But then we can always say, we knew you before then. If he hires me for anything to do with any production, I will never forget you guys. Uh, it'll just be my my job. Hopefully my job will be promote the Orville. I would love to do that. And there's a reason to do that. Uh, which means we'd be together all the time because my job would be talking to you guys about the Orville. So I would love to do that, but also have the time to make little videos and shorts and little promo pictures that I post on social media all the time. I would love to have that, even if it's just a little side job. I'd love to do it, prove myself where they say, oh, you did a really good job. Let's put him on some other shows. And I would take you guys with me. I'd be doing live shows and we'd be talking about it. We'd be talking about it with you. So you'll be there with me while I'm working. Unless I'm really, really working, got my head down. Then I say, okay, get away till I'm done. And then we'll talk about it. <laughs> yes, a classic 100% sci-fi plot. Sci-fi everything. The Orville is so classic science fiction. It's new. It's got a lot of new cool things going on with it, but at the heart of it, it's classic. And I love that somebody actually took classic sci-fi and updated it. And this is a great introduction to the show. He's talking to us. Welcome to the Orville. And so Ed's able to put down his BS for a moment and realize the better thing to do is to have Kelly here. Plus, also, maybe I can uh, win her over again. <laughs> maybe he did. I don't know. Season three finale makes you think, hmm, maybe. So then we learned that Kelly actually is the one that recommended Ed being a captain. She's trying to make amends. She has a little bit of pull because her uh, everyone loves her dad. I guess her dad's a big child. We don't know anything about her dad except for people in the union respect him. We don't know if he's alive. I don't, I don't believe we know for a fact. Um, we don't know exactly what he did. Is he an admiral? Is he retired? Did he die in the in 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 the Call of Duty? And there we go, you guys. The episode. Let me remove it. We did good. We did really good. Let me go to full screen here. Well, that's it. That is uh, our very first watch party. Hopefully, there's no kind of uh, notifications or flags or anything like that. I think. I came up with a system where it doesn't show the episode, but it just shows the subtitles. If, you, if I get flagged for subtitles, I'm going to riot. I'm definitely going to riot. I'm going to find the guy who played Derek, and I'm going to bring him here on this show personally, not via Skype or anything like that. And I'm going to say, everybody has to listen to this guy until YouTube uh, uh, takes away the flag. And nobody wants to listen to Derek. I'm just saying it. Oh, Brian Dawkins says, your first video was September 27th, 2017, and you talked about three episodes. Oh, my goodness. That was a long time ago. That was a lifetime ago. I'm so different than I was, at least mentally. The rest of this mess is pretty much the same. But mentally, I was so different. Uh, seven years ago than I am now. My 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 focuses were different. My hopes, my goals were different. Now all I want to do is hang out with you guys, promote the Orville all over the internet, and keep the lights on. Uh, but man, it's hard because YouTube YouTube is jerks. Yeah, I'll say it. I'm not monetized, so I can say whatever I want about YouTube. Take that, YouTubes. Uh, but yeah, you guys, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this episode with me now. And it'll take a day or two before I know if, if there's any trouble from doing this. I don't think there should be. And if if, if everything's good, we're going to keep doing it. We're going to watch all 36 episodes of the Orville one down. So now we have 35 more to go. Uh, and then, of course, 
uh, when we get a new season of the Orville, we'll be doing the same thing. Fingers crossed that YouTube doesn't mess with me. Joe says, YouTube being an ass again, a YouTuber. YouTube still not sorted your issue. Do better, YouTube, for F's sake. Well, they remonetized me, and then they decided to demonetize me. But this time, I think I got it truly figured out. Because you have to figure these things out for yourself. Because they don't tell you. You just have to figure it out. So I think I figured it out this time. Of course, I thought I figured it out last time. But I really think I figured it out this time. So on June 23rd, the day after uh, my birthday and the day after uh, the Orville Spotlight live stream that we're doing, I'll be able to press a button to ask to be remonetized. Uh, and if everything looks good on my channel, which I plan on cleaning up the channel in, in dumb ways, uh, they should give me the thumbs up. And then it's all on again. It's going to be live shows with uh, super chats. It's going to be ad revenue from all the videos that I make. It's going to be memberships so that you guys get special little accolades and uh, special videos, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, go be thought. YouTube, please let JP give jp a super chat please and the reason i want that is just to keep the lights on so i can keep promoting the orville universe and um if the or orville universe ever ends then we're going to move on to another fuzzy door universe i really like the ted series uh i, I won't be covering the show but i do want to recommend a show to you guys that i've started watching on apple plus great sci-fi show called dark matter not that other dark matter a new dark matter uh, uh, it's on Apple Plus. They have five episodes out. There'll probably be four more to go because everything is 10 episodes nowadays. Um, really loving the show, Dark Matter. Don't know if you guys have been able to check it out yet, but it's all about the multiverse and a guy stuck trying to get back to his universe and he's stuck in the multiverse. And there's drama and there's intrigue and there's um, uh, nail biting scenes. And you're like, uh oh, what's going to happen? And you're like, and other scenes where you're like, oh my goodness, that's crazy. Uh, highly recommend it. Check it out. It'll be something we can talk about during the live shows. I won't be covering it because I, I don't even really have time to cover the Orville, though I'm doing my best to do it anyway. F you, time. I don't respect you. I don't recognize you, time. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Brian Dawkins says, are you going uh, to get a plaque for your 100K subs? I assume so. I don't know much about that because it's never been really on my radar. Uh, but I'm guessing once I'm remonetized and I have my 106,000, well, it'll probably be 112,000 by the end of the month, by the end of next month. So 100 plus thousand subscribers and monetize, I'll probably qualify for a plaque. And I'll definitely be getting that plaque. So I can put it right there on that wall with a giant circle with a red line across it saying no youtube no but at least i got my plaque and so that would be awesome and again you guys thank you so much i am gonna have to end this stream because the wife has a uh, dinner ready she probably had it ready an hour ago but you know me always streaming can't stop streaming uh, and ted is the king of the wieners and thank you for the fingers crossed and if anyone's interested in putting in a bid uh, for the screen used uh, page from uh, the Orville, the Avis episode, that is the legit, that's the same Avis page that you saw in the episode. And the back of the page is on the back of the page and it has a bunch of quirl scripture, scripture on the back. Uh, you can uh, send your bid to egotasticft at gmail.com. Uh, the winning bid, of course, will win. Uh, it's only going to be up for a day or two uh, before I close it out. And, and that's even if I decide if, if a big enough bid doesn't come in, then I won't sell it. I'll just keep it. Maybe do a bid another day. The hope would be, though, is to get remonetized and uh, not have to get rid of it all because it's my prized possession. Uh, but I have a lot of Orville prized possessions, so they'll just have to do. But if you guys are interested in uh, television history, it's right there. Just send me your bid if you're interested. Or, or uh, the the reason I'm I'm telling you guys about it and not putting it up on uh, eBay or I don't even know what the sites are called anymore, but eBay type thing is because I want to make sure the person who gets it is a legit Orville fan and not just some 
person looking to scoop some prize thing that they plan on doing who knows what with. But I do want to thank you guys for being here. We're going to be doing more of this. Um, watch parties, assuming that YouTube allows us. And let me press my get my buttons ready here to press a thing. So I'll see you guys very soon. And remember, we all do better when we all do better. Love you. Bye-bye.